Welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English and today we are talking about the middle child. We are talking about the one that doesn't get much attention. What are we talking about guys? We are talking about the eight mark question in the unseen poetry exam. This is what we are looking at today. Now for some reason guys, this question isn't really focused on much and you find a lot of students don't even know that they have an eight marker unseen poetry question. Now let's go over this exam to put this particular question into context. It's an eight mark unseen poetry question. And before doing this question, you've just done a 24 marker unseen poetry question, which is the question before this one. So you've had one unseen poem come up already. Now guys, for this particular question, you are looking at two unseen poems. One that you've already just seen, and then you're given a brand new one for this one. And you have to compare these two poems. Now, it's only an eight mark question. So, for this question, you are given approximately 15 minutes. Now, how do you use these 15 minutes? You want to spend 10 minutes writing. And you want to spend a maximum of five minutes planning this particular question. So guys, let's be clear here. It's eight marks. You're looking at two unseen poems and you have to compare these two for either similarities or differences. And you have a total of 15 minutes. 10 of those minutes should be spent answering the question and five minutes should be spent planning your response. That is the skeleton of the question. That is the overall bones of what we are doing. Now, how many paragraphs do we do? Do we do one paragraph, two paragraphs or three paragraphs? Now, if you asked me this question, guys, years ago, I would have said you need to do two. But after having looked at lots of different model answers, which we're going to be looking at in a second, I've come to the conclusion that for this question, one paragraph is enough. One paragraph is enough. But you can't do one P paragraph or one peel paragraph because they aren't enough. The paragraph structure, guys, that we're going to use is honestly a structure that came to life from me literally going through lots of different model answers and going through the mark scheme. I'm going to explain the structure more when we do the, the, the model answer. Before, guys, we look at the paragraph structure, I think it's important for us to look at the mark scheme. Now, after looking at AO1 and AO2 and AO3 for English literature, I think this mark scheme is quite refreshing as an English literature student because look how basic and simple it is. You are only marked on AO2 when it comes to unseen poetry and all of us are aiming for seven to eight out of eight. Now, how do you achieve the top band? What do you have to do? Guys, it's very, very, very straightforward. The first thing we have to do, guys, is we have to make sure that we compare the effect of writer's methods. Now, when we look at writer's methods, we are looking, of course, at language and we are looking at structure. So essentially, guys, we are comparing language devices and structural devices. But the only difference between this and all the other bands is we're looking at the quality of the comparison, guys. We're looking at the quality of the comparison. The words that have been used, guys, are critical, insightful, and analytical. Lovely, lovely words. But I just want to compare, guys. Over here, it says simple. Over here, it says clear. Over here, it says thoughtful. So if we look at all of the different bands, for this question, guys, you're literally being compared as to how good your comparison is. But then it says critical and insightful and analytical which all pretty much mean similar things. But what are they asking you guys? They're essentially asking you how detailed and how perceptive your analysis is. Those are the two words that I always fall back on because the examples guys have a habit of using lots of different words. But the two words that I want you to always keep at the forefront is your detail and how perceptive your analysis is. Your detail looks at your effect. Do you just give one effect and end your paragraph? Or do you dig deeper for a deeper effect, for a deeper meaning? 
and the perceptive part guys looks at you when you look when we look at your effect is it unique or have you just said what everyone else says but we have to put it into context this is only an eight mark question we are only doing one paragraph therefore guys when we look at detail and being analytical and being perceptive we're not looking at writing a whole page you've got 10 minutes in 10 minutes i reckon everyone here should be able to write at least half a page or two-thirds of a page that is what you're aiming for so guys we are essentially looking at the quality of our comparison and we are comparing either our either our language devices or our structural devices for this question now earlier on guys i said to you guys for this question one paragraph is enough and this answer let's look at it first before we go over the mark it reads as follows both Bowl and Collins present their strong feelings about seasons. However, Bowl presents autumn to be conflicting, whereas Collins presents spring as beautiful and liberating. That's their point. Collins uses a semantic feel. That's their technique. Of freedom and nature, breathe canaries between the sunlight. That's their reference. Suggesting that spring allows the release of nature and happiness. That is their effect. Bold uses a semantic feel. Now they've moved on to the other poem. That's their technique uh, of shake, blown, chills and rave. That's their reference. Suggest that autumn causes turmoil and confusion. That's their first effect. Bold uses one log stanza with lots of enjoyment. That's their zooming in to show the lack of control and order caused by autumn. That's their second effect. Then they bounce back to the first poem. Whereas Collins uses regular standards with enjoyment that they're zooming in to show the freedom and liberation that spring allows. Now, if we look at the structure they followed, guys, what you're going to find is this. They've written one paragraph. And this one paragraph summarizes both poems. And we can see that they are talking about the differences between the poems. And then the red is when the writer speaks about um, the first poem and the green is for the second poem. There's, they've essentially, guys, done one paragraph where they've got a reference technique and they explain the effect. Then they bounce across to the other paragraph where they give a reference technique and they give the effect. Then they zoom in and they give the effect. Then they bounce back to the first paragraph, first poem, sorry where they zoom in and give the effect. What they've essentially done, guys, to get the following mark, which is seven out of eight, is write one paragraph, but in the paragraph, they've played ping pong. Now, what does that mean for us? Guys, what does that mean for us? It means this, guys. It means this. For your exam, this is what everyone is going to be doing in their exam. I would like all of you to begin with a point that summarizes both poems. It summarizes whether you're doing a similarity or whether you're doing a difference for both poems. Then I would like you to talk about a quote, a technique, and its effect for poem number one. And after you've done this, guys, what I would like you all to do next is talk about the reference, talk about a technique, and talk about an effect for poem number two. Then I would like you all to zoom in and give me an effect for poem number one. And once you've zoomed in and given an effect for poem number one, I would then like you to zoom in and give me an effect for poem number two. At these parts of our poem, guys, where we have the arrows this is where we we are comparing we are looking to write one full paragraph guys 
Now, I haven't got a name for it. What is it? Pretiti, Zizi, whatever you're going to call it. You can think of a fancy name. But one paragraph like this, and guys, I promise you, you're setting yourself up to secure eight out of eight. Don't faff around with doing two or three paragraphs or trying to think of how to approach it. I promise you, one paragraph written with this structure will be enough in your exam. Have one point that summarizes both poems. Then you pick the first unseen poem and you go and look at a quote, a technique, an effect from that. Then you compare across. Whether you're doing a similarity or difference, it's entirely up to you. But then you go to poem number two and you do the exact same thing. Then you bounce back to your first poem because now we're comparing. Comparing is when we go back and forth. When you bounce back to your first poem, now we zoom in. We can zoom into a word, we can zoom into a phrase, we can zoom into another device. And then we give the effect and then we go back across to our second poem. This constant back and forth will ensure you are comparing. Because one of the integral parts of the mark scheme was do you compare? Then, because we gave one effect, two effect, three effect, four effect, we are setting ourselves up to achieve the mark for being insightful, for being detailed, for being critical in our effect. But now, let's put this all to uh, a live example. So imagine guys, this was the question. So here, here are two unseen poems. And the question says, in both poems, the speaker describe the conflicted feelings that come with love. What are the similarities and differences between the way the, way the poets present those feelings about the impact? Okay, okay, okay. So guys, we're looking at the impact of love. We are looking at the impact of love in this poem. In the first poem, guys, I'll use the quote. Guys, in the first poem, I'll use the quote, love is a losing game. And in the second poem, guys, I will use the quote, you are the home I've waited for. Now, let's begin to put these or this comparison together. So my point for both poems, guys, my point for both poems is that the impact of love is different. One is positive, the other negative. That is my overall comparison done. Now let's look at poem number one. The quote was, love is a losing game. My technique that I'm going to talk about here, guys, is a metaphor and I never plan my effect. I will do that as I write. Now I move on to the second poem. So whereas in this poem, love was a losing game, this is very different because in my second poem, love is the home I've waited for. My guys here, the writer has also used a metaphor and again, I will explain the effect of the technique later. Now let's go back to po 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 poem number one. In that poem, guys, I'm going to zoom in to the word game. I'm going to zoom into the word game, guys, and I'm going to talk about the technique of symbolism and about what a game symbolizes. Again, guys, as you know, I don't plan my effect. I will discuss that as I write. And then we move on to the second point. What shall I zoom into? So whereas in the first one, I zoomed into game. In the second one, guys, the home I've waited for. I'll again, guys, zoom in to home. And I'll talk about the symbolism of what a home represents. And then I will give my effect later. And there you have one complete paragraph planned. Done, literally, guys. One complete paragraph planned and now ready to be written out in the exam. My overarching point is that in both poems, the impact of love is massively different. In one um, poem, love is massively positive and the other is negative. Now, I don't want to dwell on my point too much. I don't want to explain my point too much. 
Why? Because this question, as you all saw, only marks A02. Point is A01. So I want to make sure I get enough time on A02, which is all of this. A02 is your technique and your effect. So after I've said that in the first poem, love is negative, and in the second poem, love is positive, I then talk about how. In the first poem, guys, love is a losing game. Here, the writer has used a metaphor. What is the effect of love being compared to a game? Guys, it's the idea. Guys, it's the idea that love is out of your hands. You are not in control of it. Somebody else is playing you. Somebody else is having a good time. After I've explained that, then I'm going to go across and talk about how even though this one compares love to a game, over here, love is comfort. Love is security. Love is a place you feel safe because it's the home that they've always waited for. And I'll explain that and so on. Then I'll say, furthermore, when we zoom into the word game, the word game symbolizes a competition. Player one versus player two. There will be a loser, there will be a winner, which symbolizes the idea that in love, somebody is always hurt. Somebody is always on the losing side. Talk about that. Furthermore, the symbolism of the home in the second poem shows how love isn't limited to feelings. Because in a home, love allows you to build a family and pass that love on. So in both poems, love has two massively different impacts. The poem, the, the person in poem number one appears to be scarred by the experience of love. Whereas the person in poem number two appears to look for comfort and look for um, security in love. And that is how I would produce the paragraph. So guys, to recap, when it comes to the eight mark unseen poetry question in your exam, you have 15 minutes to compare two poems. You have five minutes to plan, 10 minutes to write. You are aiming for one paragraph. The paragraph structure that you're following guys is the one behind me. Call it whatever you want. I don't know, pretty, pretty, ZZ, whatever you want to call it. That should be a Z, guys, not an R. Um, but that is the paragraph structure that you are aiming to follow in your exam. You should be aiming to write out this paragraph within 10 minutes, which is definitely possible. 10 minutes to write a paragraph out like this is definitely possible. And that is all you are doing for the eight marker in your exam. Guys, I hope you found this video beneficial. I hope now the forgotten middle child of English literature is no longer the forgotten child. And now you're able to answer this question in your exam on May the 21st, 4th. As always guys, it's been Mr. FC English. Peace.